When I see people who have tight calves and they can't seem to stretch the discomfort away, oftentimes they're not looking high enough in their body. And what I mean by that, as usual, is we probably need to look at what's going on up top within the pelvis. Usually these people have a more forward pelvic orientation, which is pushing their center of mass relatively more forward onto their forefoot. You can see how that would push weight more forward onto the forefoot. And oftentimes these individuals have an arch that is also dropped into more of a pronated state. In gait, we need to be able to drop the arch to allow for plantar flexion to occur at the ankle and the calves to fire reflexively to allow us to get good toe off mechanics. But when you see a foot with tight calves that's dropped arch and forward center of mass, the calves are stuck in this concentrically oriented state or a tight state where the muscle is in a shortened position. It's also important to appreciate the role of the rib cage. So if I have this forward pelvis, then my ribs are gonna be pushed forward like so because the arch in my back increases. This prevents air from expanding as posteriorly as it should when we inhale because we have such a large cavity called our posterior mediastinal cavity, which is located in our posterior rib cage. This is a huge area that should expand when we inhale, but if we're being pushed forward, then that area is restricted because of the rib flare that we have going on and the compression in our posterior rib cage. So if we're inhaling and everything is going forward all the time, that's 20,000 breaths a day that we're taking of air only going forward, which is going to help push us forward onto our toes. The musculature that's gonna help us get out of this forward orientation of our pelvis are primarily the hamstrings which attach on the ischial tuberosity right here, as well as the abdominals, specifically the obliques which attach on this upper rim. When these contract and when this contracts right here, that pulls the pelvis back into more of a posterior orientation, which will then help us find more heels and get our weight relatively more back on our foot, which will take stress off of those calves from having to be in a shortened position. For this first exercise, I'm gonna get my hips really close to this wall. I'm gonna roll the foam roller up the wall with my feet, and then I'm gonna place the back of my shin there and pull my toes back, which is gonna place the calves in a lengthened position. I'm going to reach out about a 45 degree angle here, which is going to help me facilitate activation of my obliques. As I exhale through my mouth, I'm going to be pushing up, and then as I inhale through my nose, I'm going to try and sink my hips closer to the floor with each breath cycle. Do about five breaths in this position. This next exercise I call an inchworm crawl. And for this, you wanna start in this kind of downward dog position. And then you wanna take small steps with the opposite hand and foot. So I might go left foot, right hand forward, and then reach back with the opposite hand. That's gonna allow me to find obliques. And this position is also going to allow me to expand my posterior rib cage with air. Just make sure in this position that you're keeping a good distance from your feet to your hands. A lot of people throughout the duration of this exercise will start to walk their feet a little bit too close and then they start to feel it in their hamstrings or their low back. So just make sure that you're taking small steps, keeping that length between your hands and your feet. The other thing you wanna make sure you're doing is driving your front heel, whatever foot is forward, that heel should remain flat. If you can't quite get it there, that's okay. Just work to get there over time. And this last exercise isn't a stretch at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. This position is going to help us facilitate those hamstrings and also obliques. So I'm elevating my feet on a couple of blocks here, which is gonna provide me with a reference for my heels. And then I'm gonna think about pushing my low back into the ground as I posteriorly tuck my hips off of the floor. So my low back is flat, but my hips are slightly off. As I do that, I'm thinking about pulling down with my hamstrings into those blocks, and that's gonna allow me to sense a good amount of upper hamstring muscles as I get into this position. In this position, you also wanna reach at about a 45 degree angle, because again, we're trying to facilitate activation of the obliques, and that is a good reaching angle to do so. Also, that reaching angle is going to allow you to get some expansion within your posterior rib cage, because when you exhale, you should feel a slight degree of oblique tension after you're done exhaling. You wanna keep that tension in your obliques as you pause with your mouth closed, and then inhale through your nose, keeping that slight amount of tension. That's going to send air into your rib cage, and because gravity is acting down on us, that will allow expansion to occur posteriorly. 